Uh, next up, uh, um, I want to keep, we keep this move, by the way, you're going to notice it's going to be a very fast pace to this. That's the goal, uh, and there's not a, lot of, uh, n not a lot of space between each of the sessions here. Uh, is another conversation, this one's going to be moderated by my partner and CEO uh, of Federated Media, Deanna Brown. I'm going to bring her up with Blake Irving, Chief Product Officer of Yahoo. So please join me in welcoming both Blake and Deanna to the Signal PG stage. Guys? Blake? Deanna? How's everybody out there doing? Awesome, great. Seeing the tweet stream, this is almost as much fun as watching. Hi Blake. Hi Deanna. How are you doing? Good. Good. So I thought I would um, talk to you as much about content as advertising. Okay. Taking your role as Chief Product Officer at Yahoo gives you permission, brand permission to play in both areas. But before we jump into that conversation, what would you like this audience an extended audience to know about the, what I'll call the new Yahoo. So um, for those of you who don't know, so we do have a new CEO at Yahoo, started uh, January 5th. Um, I think that the, the, one of the things to, to note um, about, I guess, what you just called the new Yahoo is that there's a willingness, and maybe, maybe that's not uh, fair, maybe it's an eagerness to take some uh, big swings. Uh, and I, I don't think that the, the company um, previously was ready to take some, some were and some were not. So those big swings don't necessarily change the value proposition of Yahoo, nor do they change what Yahoo is for consumers or, nor for advertisers. Okay. But I think um, some of those big swings will potentially put us in, in other areas of, uh, of business that can create very related revenue streams that are good for advertisers, good for Yahoo, great for our consumers. So same value proposition for both advertisers and consumers, but bigger swings, bigger bets. Bigger swings, bigger bets, and uh, some areas that I think would, would whether it's surprise um, folks that would be in that particular area or something that says like, wow, that actually completes a picture that I really didn't think about before in terms of whether it's closed loop marketing, whether it's taking, um, taking a, a position that is more about commerce than, um, than just about uh, advertising and doing brand or performance branding or performance advertising. So speaking of a, a, a sizable bet, um, I think you recently launched uh, a thing that I'm looking forward to seeing a little bit more of and hearing more about, which is this thing called Living Ads. Yeah. And I think it was described in Ad Age as new TV meets magazine meets online ad format. Yeah. and existing on a thing called Live Stand. It's a lot of meat. <laughs> it, it is. Well, it's a movie pitch, right? Yeah. You know, that's <laughs> right. how they do it in Hollywood, I hear. Um, tell me a little bit about, first, before we get into li to living ads, let's talk a little bit about Live Stand. So okay. how's that doing? What's the reaction been into it? Any metrics you want to share? Uh, reaction has been uh, very positive. So reaction has been, uh, we're about 4.5 stars uh, in the Apple Store today. We've, we've been releasing uh, monthly. So we've actually had three releases. We've got another one slated for this month. Um, it's, it's a very interesting application in that instead of doing a native app, and every publisher on the planet says, I want to publish once, and I want it to go across every platform. Right? And what's, what's happened in the marketplace is every publisher finds themselves having to create an, uh, an iOS version plus a Droid version plus uh, you know, an HTML version. And, and that's just untenable for us yeah. because generally as, as platforms pro proliferate, and for those that are developing on Android platform, there's actually lots of them because every OEM modifies it. Mm -hmm. So we, we took an approach that was very different with LiveStand. And LiveStand is a, a, you know, a living, breathing, kind of wonderful experience where you can, you can kick back and, and consume content in a much more natural way that is more immersive, more meaningful. And we thought if we could bring ads into an environment like that as well, um, it would be really, really wonderful in an HTML5 environment. So we created a technology called Cocktails uh, good name. Good name. You know, from a, for a developer community, you have to understand these guys. Like, <laughs> that's just the coolest name. So there's two pieces. There's something called Mojito, which is a client side uh, renderer, and, a, and a, uh, something called Manhattan, which is the server side. Uh, and it's a combination of HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript, and Node.js uh, on the server that allows us to do um, amazingly rich things um, on a on a on a 
what would ostensibly you'd think of as a web page, but it's not a page. It's an experience now. Yeah. Um, and I, I should just go ahead and. Yeah. And why don't you show the living ads demo, which obviously will also demonstrate live stand. Is there while you're loading that up? Is there? Uh, do you have a download number? Is there any published notion of how big live stand is at this point? Uh, we don't publish that number. Okay. Um, I noticed I didn't ask about finances. Just thought. Yeah. You know, thanks for that. You're welcome. So I'm going to prove that I have old, uh, you know, 50-year-old eyes and pop that off, and. Um, <laughs> Open this up. So I'm going to show you uh, something that is called a living ad. Again, I, I want you to remember what you're going to see is actually uh, HTML. So notice over in the, your right-hand side, that little display area. Kind of almost looks, I mean, some of the responses I've had from folks have been, well, that's kind of creepy. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that. But because I it, looks, it looks so natural. Now, when I, when I tap this screen, it opens up, and you heard, um, you, you heard I, I think it was uh, John talking earlier about the tr changing the pr way that we actually produce video. So if you think about the way that a, a DVD is actually produced, this is very similar to that. It's like DVD production on a video. So you just change the way you do video production and add this type of capability. So I have these two people snuggling on the couch, and uh, this is about jeans. And so I can go actually of course tap, tap on her. Of course. <laughs> Naturally. Absolutely nothing provocative about this, so no. I'll go ahead and tap that and pull out. <laughs> hey. Come, come on. So I'm going to tap these jeans as well. This is a and family so, company. And I mean, so you'll note, that, you'll note that I'm actually, um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sending signal in a video. So the, the problem with video, when we say, oh, video is the next generation of ads on the internet, there's two things you know about a video. You know that it started and you know that it stopped and you don't know that anything happened while the video was running. Here I've actually got video content and I'm interacting with it in a very rich way. Not only am I interacting with it, if I wanted to transact, because remember, this is just a web page. I know it doesn't look like a web page, but it's just HTML and CSS3 and JavaScript. So if I tap on this thing that says, um, you know, buy now, I can actually come up through that ad and say, okay, well, I'm a, uh, I'm a 30 waist, I'm regular, oh, okay, not really, short, <laughs> and then uh, come and say, I'll, I'll, I'll buy now, and then actually transact within the advertising and close the loop. And I tell you, one of the biggest issues that, that exists on the web today is you do a wonderful job with your advertisement, you do great creative, you gather all the signal, you gather all this information, and then you send somebody away to a web page. What happens most of the time when they get sent to a web page and, a, and your own site is they close it and they don't stick. And you know that because you pay attention to metrics and this is a data-related, data-oriented company. That happens. So what we're trying to do to solve that is within the ad creative actually allow some of that transaction and some of that value to accrue. And while you're all branders, there is a, a, a a big tendency to start becoming a performance brander, whether you're an automotive manufacturer or in the consumer goods business, and you want to bring people down that funnel. Uh, and if you can do it within the ad, without sending people to other sites, it's magic. Um, and so that is one of the things that we're trying to enable um, with this technology, actually closing the loop. And if I want to even hide an Easter egg in this thing, I can just do something like uh, kind of clever, which has no uh, meaning, but the engineer just wanted to throw it in there, so I thought it'd show. All right, you got to close this. I'm distracted. Um, so you mentioned a, a lot there. So let me um, get you to unpack a couple of things and just get Yahoo's point of view on a couple of topics. Uh, data. So you mentioned data. You mentioned real time. You mentioned commerce. We'll talk about. Let's let's separate those two topics. Yeah. Um, real time data. You know, is that the promise of, of this medium? Well, there, there's, a, there's, a, there's a bunch of different promises for the medium. Real-time data is certainly one of them. No, having a one-to-one -one relationship with a customer is one of them. Uh, getting data about, it's anonymized, so that, that sense of trust is honored, um, is important. But the, the data is, a, is amazingly important for us. And I'll, I'll give you a couple of examples. We, we did a study, and this wasn't real-time necessarily, but it was... Um, it was aggregated data that we were able to analyze. And it started as a sciences experiment and now as a product of ours. 
uh, called proximity match. And what proximity match allows us to do is actually find out what radius a consumer is from a retail store. And this mm -hmm. is for retailers. And we did some experimentation on this. And within a, let's say, a five mile radius started to target ads at individuals. We did a, a database overlay mm -hmm. between the retailer and ours and then started sequencing advertising, not, not clicks, just knowing what the impression count was. Mm -hmm. And we were trying to determine whether people actually are influenced by proximity to the retail outlet. Okay. If you were outside of that five mile radius, you were half as likely to actually act on the offer that was placed mm -hmm. in the advertisement. If you were within that five mile radius, you were twice as likely to act and interestingly enough, uh, it, like 89% of folks that actually see something on the web, they actually transact off. The retailing is actually taken okay. off the web. 11% mm -hmm. takes place on the web. Right. right. So we actually did math and science experiment to determine how many people were actually buying inside the store. Mm. Right. And we had a, well, 35% of impressions were in that five mile radius. 70% yeah. of the purchases that were made off of that offer took place within that five mile radius. So the likelihood was there. And it was a 7x return on ad spend for this retailer. And they were off the charts stoked about uh, how well it performed right. for them. And th that's a, another promise of data. Yeah. It's not just, it's combining a retailer's data or an advertiser's data with the data that we have um, and, and doing something that's meaningful for the advertiser. And it, and it sounds like it's, is it as much about who I am as I'm entering that five mile radius or is it just that I'm in, look, is location the only factor there and well, then the retail it, it, data a, or is it is about the fact that I've been there before and I am low on tide? Well, what, what, you, what you end up finding out is that because you're within that five mile radius, you've been there before. Right. Because you're within that close proximity to that retail outlet, you're familiar with it, you actually know how to drive the streets to get there, it's maybe intuitive or mem memorized. Mm -hmm. And so it becomes a much more natural thing. So proximity matters a whole lot. Right. Now there's a one-to-one -one relationship that is another set of data on top of that okay. that is, ev frankly, even more important. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, this medium gives us an opportunity to, as I showed in that living ad, to have a one-to-one -one conversation with an individual right. and take it all the way down to, yeah, I'm going to buy. Or if you think about the signal that's coming in from that advertisement, you know exactly how far the purchase cycle I went, how far I went to the funnel, and did I pull the trigger or I didn't, didn't I? Right. Like if I would have purchased those jeans, it would have been like the, I don't know, the 110th pair that I have. So <laughs> you know that I went all the way down to the buy button and then backed out. Yeah. And you get to see that. And so you actually know maybe why I decided not to, not to, not to pull the trigger. Yeah. So data provides, safe to say data provides some context for the advertising message, oh, as does the engagement right. with the content. Um, so let's talk about content and, and broadly speaking, I think the living ads are a great example of not advertising per se, but content. Yeah. Um, talk me, and we saw an example where you took content and then you brought somebody down a funnel to commerce. Are there other good examples for this room? Because I know they care a lot about commerce um, that are content based. Well, content and commerce actually, well, Content and branding and commerce start to converge pretty tightly in this medium, as you know. Mm -hmm. So that, that is a very explicit um, example. Yeah. But I any advertiser that actually wants to have somebody pull the trigger um, and not do it within the ad, um, that's, that's also a pretty, pretty typical uh, scenario. Some of the, some of the content that, that we provide provides a pretty interesting um, opportunity to do both, I think, owned media and earned media. Mm -hmm. we, have a, we have a thing called uh, the sentiment slider that is a, a, a way to actually engage with a brand within the context of a story. And while you may not actually pull the trigger on it, you're able to tell everybody else, in, in this case in your Facebook social network, that, hey, I'm engaging with this brand, shows up on the wall, shows up in the right rail, and tells somebody, hey, I've engaged with this brand on this story. And, and, surfaced an opinion mm -hmm. and brings them back to that content. Whether uh, in, in our case, in Yahoo's case, if, if uh, you, you noticed in that case, we actually pulled the trigger on Yahoo content mm -hmm. and the Yahoo content and the purchase was within the Yahoo store. Mm -hmm. There's this notion that the end user actually has to trust the transaction provider. Yeah. So we think that 
and, and the way that we've executed this certainly in our search results because we do a lot of content uh, content and search results and then allow folks to actually pull the trigger out of a Yahoo, uh, a Yahoo mm -hmm. small business or Yahoo store. And it's very important that there's a trust relationship between whatever the transactor is and yeah. what the content was. And that's not an easy, uh, not an easy bridge to cross, and not, nor is it a, a place where you can find a lot of examples across the web uh, where it works in an open web environment. In Amazon, as an example, yeah. it's mostly all about commerce. Sure. Um, and and much, so, much less so about the content. And it's probably a different experience. We're running out of time. But, you know, as a last question, I mean, one of the things I, I spent a handful of years at Yahoo, and one of my fondest memories is its appreciation for content around what I'll call anchor or tentpole events. Okay. And um, you're still very much in that business. Oh, big time. And uh, is there anything that's new per se in, that, in how you approach the destination yahoo.com big yeah so it's, it's, it's interesting um, tent poles and anchors is actually a, a, a content strategy of ours so we, we actually surface events whether there are our own events like the Bill Maher comedy show that we put on last mm -hmm. week um, whether it was the Clinton concert that, uh, for his foundation that we ran out with at the Hollywood Bowl whether it's the Oscars, the Golden Globes, the Super Bowl, uh, the Grammys, we do we, we think of these things as as uh, tent poles or anchors, and know that they happen every year. We know that's relatively predictable. We know there's folks that there's a giant audience that's accumulated and can be targeted and segmented in ways that are that are appropriate. Um, we actually are doing something uh, very large with. Uh, P&G that is around the Olympics mm. uh, in 2012, and it will be the largest event that we've ever done. Uh, and so that's just around the corner for us. And we will be uh, rolling that out in 12 languages. And if you think about Yahoo's footprint, it's interesting. Yeah. We are really the only media property of its kind. And we are a premier digital media company, sure. right? And we are in uh, you know, 180 countries. We have uh, 720 million customers for worldwide. And for the Olympics in particular, 12 languages, 25 countries, 25 markets where we'll actually have pages that are, rel that are related exactly to their athletes yeah. um, with 100 million viewers worldwide. And that footprint from one company is very unusual. Usually it's covered by quite a few different yeah. networks. So the value proposition for us is come to one place, cover the entire planet, do it in a way that is inclusive, that is targetable, that you can gather lots of data on, and it has, frankly, very, very good um, owned content yeah. where we are we have uh, you know 12 folks on the ground 25 folks on the ground at the olympics that are including you know named celebrities that are ex-olympian gold medalists that are there actually producing and writing for us and doing interviews and uh, doing yeah screen stuff so that's that's probably our biggest endeavor so far okay. we're going to get out of here because john will kick me off stage and it'll pay back as hell later so um, thank you. Thanks, Deanna. Appreciate it. We're going to go out this way. Thanks so much. Take care.